Hello everybody. In this tutorial, we will be using Abacus to perform a stress analysis of a ball in contact with a brick. So that the difference from previous uh, tutorials is now we're, we're looking at contact conditions. So two things that um, may come into contact during the, the solution of the problem. So let me jump across. So as always, check our working directory is correct. It's fine. In my case, I've already said it. And um, let's save this model. I'm going to call it ball and brick. And I'm going to rename this to be ball and brick, or maybe the state ball and brick, because I'm guessing I want to do a transient analysis or some other type. And um, so I'm going to just follow the same steps in the previous, as in the previous models. So make the parts, so except the difference now, I'm going to make two parts. So I'm going to make a ball first. And it's going to be 2D, deformable, the approximate size is set to one. And um, so I'm going to draw it using this one here. So arc, where I give the center first and then the two endpoints. So the center, I'm going to give a zero. So on the uh, y axis, um, 0 0.01, so one centimeter up. So that would be the, the center. And um, then I'm going to give the outer point here. To the 0 0.01 common 0 0.01 for center and then the bottom will be the origin so 0 comma 0. So I'm going to simulate this 2D so it's kind of like a cylinder in contact with a long break basically and to the symmetry I'm only going to model one side of the ball. So if I go to the straight line and then I just join the dots here press escape that's the, the ball finished. So press done. That's just on there. So I'll mesh that in a second, but let's create the second part now. So double click on parts, go brick, 2D planar deformable shell, approximate size one. And I'm going to just draw a block the rectangle. So zero comma zero starts in the origin. That'll be the contact point. And then I'll go down to the minus zero or zero point zero point zero one comma minus zero point zero one. So down over here basically. Right there, cube. So press escape or tick this off and press done. So now we have our two parts and we can change between them. And I want to make a mesh. So I'll open it up, go mesh and set the element size. Let's check what the default element size looks like. It's a bit coarse. So maybe let's, instead of one millimeter, let's go half a millimeter. So that's okay. And Let's change the meshing type to be quad structure. Generally, if you can use structured, um, you tend to get a, a better mesh, as in the elements tend to be closer to squares. Let's check the element type as well. Um, they should be stress analysis. Um, in this case, let's go for plain strain instead of plain stress because it's going to be a long cylinder, so that's probably a better approximation. We'll leave linear elements. You'll also notice the code here. So Abacus gives a specific code to each element type. So if you're reading the paper, they may report the code type that they used. So if I turn something off, you'll see an order disappears here. If I turn off reduce integration, or appears when I turn it on. And so that's the mesh created for the ball. Let's change it to brick. I can open the brick out here, but I can also just, there's multiple ways to everything now because I can just drop down here and go to brick. And so let's change the meshing type to be quad structured. It'll change to green. And set the element spacing to be half a millimeter again. And press OK. Click to match it, click yes, very good. And um, make sure that the element type is also set to plain strain. We don't want one of them to be plain stress, the other to be plain strain. So that's our mesh done. So now we can create the material properties and we can assign them. So we'll use our default material, which is steel. So 209, 0.3. Next to the section. Uh, one thing um, we haven't, or I haven't talked about much is to do with the units. So Abacus doesn't assume any units, it just assumes that you're using consistent units. So if you draw your part in meters, then you have to give the mechanical properties in terms of meters. So you know, uh, uh, a Pascal is a Newton per meter squared. So if you want to give the units in Pascals, you have to draw 
or new to Bermuda Square, you need to draw the part in meters. So you have to be careful. Sometimes people will draw the part in millimeters. And so then you would have to give the Young's modulus in newtons per millimeter squared, which can get confusing. So generally, I find it easiest to just do everything in SI base units. So meters, uh, newtons, kilograms, uh, like that. So let's assign the material properties. So I've got a section assignment for the ball, just like this one. Um, I won't bother creating the part. I set, steal the section. I'll do the same for the brick. I won't make a set, but you can if you want. So that's what it does assigned. I could have used two different properties there, but that's, uh, that's fine. So let's add our instances to the assembly. So in this case, we're adding actually adding two instances. So the ball, we press apply, and the brick, and we press OK. Um, so I drew those to be in the correct position, so I don't have to position them here. But um, you can do positioning of them here. So if you see here, there's a translate. So for example, I could select the ball, and then say, translated from this point as a starting point to this point over here or something like that. But um, I, I drew them on purpose in the correct position. Uh, but you can rotate and translate here and some other options as well. So that's our assembly ready to go with our two instances. Let's make our analysis step. So static channels, a static stress analysis again, it's fine. Uh, non in geometry is off. We're assuming the deformations will be small. <laughs> So once again, we're going geometry, materials, loading. So now we just have to do the loading conditions. So we're going to have a symmetry plane here, which the normal is in the x direction. So the x displacement will be zero along all these points. So if I go BCs, um, mechanical symmetry, and then I'll just go sim x here for all of these. Continue, I'm going to select that uh, edge and then hold on shift on my keyboard and then select this one. So I've both edges there on the symmetry plane selected. Press on and X in. So the U1 or the X displacement is zero along that line. I'm going to set the displacement to be zero on the bottom of the block. Um, so I can either go displacement and then select that and set U1 equal U2, U3 equal zero, or I can select the cast. It's easier than typing. So I'll just go um, call it fixed. Select the bottom edge here. Press done. Expecting cast, so u1 equals u2 equals u3 equals zero, and the rotations don't come into play in a with solid elements like that. They're only for special uh, elements. Um, so the last thing is I'm going to displace the top of the ball down. So I'm going to go um, disp displacement. It's like the top edge. Let me get my head out of the way. Um, so I'm going to specify minus one. Um, point 0.1 of a millimeter, so minus e to the four. So I could here set u1 to be zero. So if I set u1 to be zero, it means as it pushes down, these points cannot expand out. So if you imagine if I push down on this, it'll want to conserve its volume so the ball will expand out. So the points on top will want to expand out. But if I set u1 equal zero, they're not allowed to, so they're constrained and not to. So there are like two different ways of applying displacement because it's a 2D problem. So I'll leave it off. So that means that all of these points have to move down by 1e to the minus 4, but they're free to move in the x direction. So, in fact, when I don't take this, it means that the force condition is zero. So, when we don't apply boundary conditions to some patches, um, for a stress analysis problem, Abacus assumes it's a zero force boundary condition or a zero traction boundary condition. And very good. So the last thing is the contact condition. So if I could just ran the model now, what would happen is the ball would just overlap the brick and there'll be zero stress everywhere and Abacus would be happy. So we actually have to tell Abacus that these two patches here may overlap each other. And if they do, you need to apply a, a compressive force pushing them back apart. So to do that, and that's it's also boundary condition, but more complex boundary conditions tend to be done in this interactions. So if I double click on interactions and go surface to surface contact. Continue. So now I have to select the two patches. One that calls the master and one that calls the slave. So I'll pick the, the brick surface as the master, press done. Select surface region and select the slave to be the ball surface. And it opens up this configuration. If I click this button here, it will just flip, uh, switch them. Um, so it shouldn't make a difference which one you pick. In reality, particularly when the mesh is coarser, it can make a difference. Um, so you may need to, to check uh, um, if you have problems with convergence, you may need to flip them. 
So I'll leave defaults here, but I need to define a contact interaction property. So if I click this thing here, it'll make one for me. Interaction property for contact, continue. Uh, mechanical tangential behavior, you can set it to frictionless, which we will, but if you wanted uh, coefficient of friction that was non-zero, you can put it uh, here. So you pick penalty and, and set it there. And so use frictionless and then mechanical normal behavior and this hard method. So these are the contact algorithms that they use. So um, these ones are, are fine for most cases. So press OK, that's now been selected. Press OK, so that's set up our contact condition. So, okay, I think we're ready to run the model now. Make sure to save it, create a job, double click. Call it steady state ball and brick. Okay, right click submit, see if we forgot anything. I'll monitor. So typically when you use contact conditions, it makes the models more difficult to solve and uh, slower to solve because it has to check for all these overlaps. So if you can get away without co using contact conditions, uh, that's, uh, that's better. But some cases they're unavoidable. Okay, so there's some warnings that there are two unconnected regions in the model. That's fine. We know that because we have contact conditions. But just in case, for example, you added the ball, you added, say, if you're the hot bar case or the, the stress analysis in the bar case, if you added that twice, you would think there was only one because they're overlapping. But if you saw in the warnings there was two unconnected, you would have known that you must have added the bar twice or there's some part underneath the other part. So in our case, that's a fine, that's an okay warning. So zero force everywhere in the model based on the default check the average um, to see if it's uh, zero. So let's just check. Um, so everything looks fine here. So I can just set this back to the deformed one. So when I set it to the deformed one, one you can see it looks very strange, it all overlaps. So sometimes, particularly in contact analysis, if um, you're using the default auto scale, it doesn't really make sense for contact analysis. It looks like it's overlapping when it's not um, because you're multiplying um, the deformation by a, um, by a number greater than one. So if I just leave it as one, and I flip between the uh, undeformed and the deformed, you can see it's moving down, and we've certain pattern of stress. So this uh, is the volume stress, so it shows probably where yielding is going to occur first for permanent deformation. So you can see it's actually below the surface, um, and this agrees with the analytical solutions for contact mechanics. So for example, if you have two ball bearings in contact, uh, plastic deformation actually doesn't occur at the surface, it occurs and just below the surface when you're overloaded. And so we can do some plots as we did before. We can look at the displacement. For example, if we look at the U2 displacement, you can see it's all constant. If we look at the U1, you can see that we allowed it to slide out. So this, these points here are actually moving upwards. So we, can, we can't see it very well because it's quite small here. And we look at um, other stresses if we wanted. Um, look at the maximum principal stress. If it was brittle, it'll suggest where it might break first. When you see colors that look very strange here, they change abruptly between elements. It normally suggests that the elements are quite coarse in that region, that the change in the fields is so rapid that the elements can't really capture. So probably you need a finer mesh in around that content. Um, in this case, we have a symmetry condition. So you can actually, via Abacus Vigo view and ODB display options, uh, you can get Abacus to show the full part. So even though it only did the calculation for this part, we can go and uh, mirror about the Y, Z plane. So if you see Y and Z, uh, plane, turn that on, press apply, and it will mirror the part. So then you can, you can see the, the full results. So that's normally pretty useful. So if you're presenting your results to uh, an audience that isn't so familiar with, with modeling, it can be confusing if you're uh, displaying like a uh, using symmetry planes because they'll, they'll be confused and wondering where is the rest of the part. So if you're presenting results from a symmetric analysis, it's often good to show the full model so people can understand uh, better. And so this all looks fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop this uh, tutorial here.